Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Mather. I am the author of Nomad, as well as Cyberstorm, Darknet, Atopia Chronicles. I'm here today to show you a really cool full 3D simulation of the solar system during the events that I describe in my new book, Nomad. Uh, it was me that developed the, uh, the simulation behind this, uh, but there were a lot of people that helped me along the way. Uh, literally dozens of astrophysicists and uh, geologists that helped me define and refine the science behind it. In particular, I want to thank Dr. Raman Skiba, the Center for Astrophysics and Space Sciences at the University of California at San Diego. Also, Dr. Seth Shostak, uh, the Senior Astronomer and Director of SETI, as well as Dr. Kevin Rauch, the University of Maryland Center for Astrophysics. All that being said, I'm assuming you've actually read the Nomad book. If you were thinking of reading Nomad and you haven't read it yet, you probably want to press pause right now because I am going to reveal a lot of plot points and reveal what Nomad is, how it interacts with the solar system, as well as the Earth and the climate modeling. So if you haven't read it yet and you're thinking of reading it, then you probably want to read it first and then come back and play the video. Or if you just want to watch it now or if you already read the book, then let's get on to the simulation. Okay, so here we have the 3D simulation software running. I'm showing you a video from the window. It's not actually a video, it's actually a full uh, interactive 3D simulation that's running right now. So I can interact with it, I can zoom in, we can go right into the plane of the solar system. Um, I can turn it around so we're looking at the solar system. And there's the Milky Way in the background. It's actually accurate with all the where all the stars are in the background in relation to where we're looking. Um, I can zoom out. Whoa, we'll go all the way out. We're going a long way. Okay. Um, and here you can see there's the center of the solar system, the inner solar system, um, the asteroid belt, uh, as well as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto, our little new dwarf planet or sub-planet, sub however you want to call it. Poor, poor Pluto now. So let's, let's zoom in, have a look at a few more things here before we actually get to lobbing our uh, nomad object through the solar system, I can zoom in and look directly at the sun. Um, also, there's a few other interesting features here. I can click on the Earth to get some uh, reports on the Earth. So here's the actual Earth that's running in, in the simulation. There's a full climate modeling uh, going on. So right now we're running at 15 days, uh, 15 days per second. And so at that rate, you can see the Earth going in its annual orbit around the sun. But as it does so, you can see here in the climate simulation, now we're in the summertime in the northern hemisphere, uh, and the polar ice cap has receded. And then as the Earth moves around to the other side of its orbit, you'll watch the, um, the polar ice cap get larger and then gradually get smaller again. And the albedo here, the average reflectivity of the Earth, uh, changes ever so slightly. So... With that said, now that we've had a look at uh, kind of the, the, the basics of the simulation software, let's launch Nomad through the solar system and see what happens. So I'm assuming right now that you've actually read the book. And so Nomad is actually a pair of binary uh, black holes, primordial black holes, uh, as I describe in the book, that have a mass of 40 solar masses. Um, and they're incoming at the solar system at a speed of 8,000 kilometers a second. So, without further ado, let's lob our um, let's lob our black holes at the center of the solar system and just see what happens. Okay, so here I've set everything up, and here I have my incoming black hole heading directly towards the center of the solar system, coming in at 8,000 kilometers a second. My 40 solar mass uh, binary pair. You can see we have a very, very close call with Mercury and uh, Venus brushes by them. Um, and, our, and our black hole pair actually, it's, I had it as one point here, but it's actually a binary pair of them rotating around each other. But it misses the Earth by about 75 million kilometers, the same distance that it misses the Sun. You can see uh, in our simulation here that Mercury and Venus uh, have extremely high um, gravitational slingshot effects. In fact, they're completely thrown out of the, the solar system. Um, we'll go and look at this in the uh, in the plane. And Mercury is is thrown upwards, where Venus is thrown uh, downwards at extremely high uh, velocity. Um, and the other planets are thrown into uh, equally disarray. Uh, but we're going to show you some of the effects on what's acting actually happening with Earth now. Here we have the Earth, and so now we are about uh, a month uh, after 
the interaction with uh, Nomad. So you can see that the average temperature on the surface of the Earth is still at 15.3 degrees, which is still pretty close to uh, what it would uh, usually be. Although this simulation doesn't include the volcanic effect. So actually in the book, we have a very rapid drop in temperature um, right after the event that corresponds to the, uh, the, the ash and dust thrown into the air. Um, what I'm going to do is increase the simulation speed so we can get to something a little bit more uh, interesting. Here you can see how much everything's being thrown off. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, take out the climate simulation here. Um, we can see uh, that uh, that's the future path of the Earth. You can see Mercury, Venus really thrown off. Mars has gone into a completely different, uh, completely different orbit. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit. We can see Saturn there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the simulation speed so that we can start to see what happens a little bit in the future. Also to have a look at how Earth's orbit has really changed. So I'm going to change to um, here now. I've changed to a much faster simulation speed so you can see how Mercury and Venus have just been completely thrown out of the solar system. Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn also, their orbits have been changed dramatically as well as Mars. You can see that the Earth actually is staying fairly close here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on uh, some, an interesting feature here where I can see uh, the actual habitable zone. And so the habitable zone is the zone around the Sun uh, that is where the Earth itself remains habitable. And so you can see in this... Um, and this simulation that the Earth actually remains quite nicely in this uh, in this green zone, almost exactly where uh, it was before, where all the other planets have actually been completely thrown all over the place, uh, and the surf temperature of the Earth actually is dropping slowly as we go through. We're about one year further on now from the Nomad encounter. The temperature, the average temperature of the Earth, has dropped about one degree. But it is actually still staying in this habitable zone, and actually, it actually managed to remain there. And now we're going to come up on the interaction that actually I described at the end of Nomad, which is what happens 19 months after Nomad passes, and that is the close brush uh, with Saturn. So here you can see that Saturn actually is being dragged into a retrograde orbit around the Earth, and what's going to happen at a point exactly 19 months uh, after the encounter with Nomad is that Earth and Saturn are going to have an extremely close call. Here I just paused it. You can see uh, how close that is. And how close exactly is that? Well, that's something we're going to have to answer in Nomad 2. So I hope everybody's enjoyed watching this little video. Um, you can actually download the software yourself. I've got instructions on the parameters to set for this to actually play with it. And you can lob your own black holes through it. Um, and, uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed Nomad.